Hi, how are you? Welcome. Oh, thank you, thank you for thank having me. So I mean, this is wow, 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 this yeah. looks amazing. Welcome to our exhibition. Wow, awesome. Tell me about the paintings. Yeah, so I think it's a very kind of current pose, mm. and it it wasn't that common to pose like this even in a fashion magazine. I don't think until more recently. So yeah, yeah that sort of all features quite heavily in my work. Mm. Yeah, no, I mean, I see a lot of um, those types of poses, like, you know, my age group. Yeah, um, yeah, I see yeah. a lot of women try and, like, show them off as well. I kind of think it looks a bit awkward because it's a bit like <laughs> trying to do it's that. Not easy to and it, yeah, no, it's not easy as well. But I mean, I can, I can kind of see why people do that. Um, but what would you suggest people do that for as well? Um, well, you often find that women pose in a certain way to have the photograph taken, for example. Yeah. And that's completely different to like 10 or 20 years ago. You would never like kind of pout or yeah. do something like that. But that's very, very normal now. You would just yeah. probably stand there, look quite rigid and yeah. it wasn't very sexy at all. Whereas now sexy is kind of the default. So is it more of a like a making myself look presentable yeah, or available a or a lot better than the a lot better than yes <laughs> okay cool i can I, okay i can understand that so, a lot of people um, my age as well kind of normalize this kind of pose as well yeah. again it's kind of awkward to do but i mean um i i can kind of see why they do it um would you say it's more for like social media attention or for them to feel better about themselves or is it a mix of both? I think social media has a massive impact mm. in terms of all sorts of different imagery and the way that we present ourselves. Now, even if you're not on social media, mm -hmm. you know, you would know that, that when you pose for a photograph, yeah. it's a different kind of, it's sort of like self-styling yourself, isn't it? Yeah. Sort of yeah. like that, which used to be just for film stars or famous people. Mm -hmm. Now the normal person kind of pose do that and whatever yeah. how do you think culture has defined our generation um to an extent now we've got all of these things going on in the world how do you think it's affected us yeah things like only fans has been a huge has made a huge impact on the way that we live and think and feel even if you're not on only fans most people mm -hmm. are aware of it or other kind of digital platforms mm -hmm. so it does trickle into just everyday living and how you think and feel and present yourself and as we mentioned just even if you still have a a, a normal camera mm -hmm. you would probably think about how to style yourself in front of it even if it would depend it doesn't matter how old you are that's yeah. something that does has trickled down i think into everyday life and culture okay i see so you suggest like you know young people look at older people kind of doing the same pose yeah, and absolutely. kind of feel like it's more normal yeah. or more acceptable or presentable to 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 replicate that yeah, in order absolutely. for them and it's constant yeah. generation okay yeah and also the way you know like we can take so many images yeah now, like one after the other like you, nobody used to do that you used to take when you had a film uh, you know the the old camera mm -hmm. using a traditional film you just take one or two because you wouldn't want to waste the negative yeah whereas now you can take like 10 shots as many as you want yeah in one in one go that's completely and so you would choose the best one and that just wouldn't happen lockdown has happened only fans has become like a, a main source of income yeah. for a lot of people so how how would you what would you say it, it, it would you say it kind of plays on their mental health or that they need to do this or is it more like a i'm doing this for me or i'm doing this that i need to pay the bills oh both i mean there are lots of different ways at looking at something like only fans mm -hmm. and i 
originally, you know, before I saw a famous celebrity talking about how she has now made many millions out mm -hmm. of it in the last sort of 12 to 18 months, mm -hmm. I was quite judgmental and I thought, no, 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 you shouldn't do that, that's wrong, that's inappropriate, you yeah. have children. But actually then she explained, she said, well, one of the reasons I'm doing it is that I do have family to feed. Mm -hmm. um, she hasn't always been able to rely on someone else in her life, to, you know, to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. So then I kind of changed my mind a little bit and I think it is a very current thing and you know life um sorry society changes anyway yeah. so there's no point in just pretending that we lived 20 years ago pre only yeah. uh we have to kind of you know live in the society like now and obviously 2020 um nobody expected that to happen nobody exactly. expected to be working at home nobody expected everything to be closed so actually all of those bar jobs and restaurant jobs were completely obsolete for at least a year yeah so what are those people supposed to do so yeah. it, it is a form of employment and that's that's possibly a good thing yeah um, so you mentioned about um a lot of people you know lockdown has affected them they had to stay at home yeah. um one thing i want to ask you though is uh why would people pay for OnlyFans when they can resort to other medias or whatever for free even? What made OnlyFans so attractive and so popular for people to pay for, then get it for free? I think probably the quality is a little bit higher on OnlyFans and also it's kind of like people that aren't necessarily on other platforms and they are just, you know, normal people that would have been in shops or bars or they would have been a waitress or a waiter before, now they're on OnlyFans. And I think that's what people want. They want authenticity. That's possibly what they're not going to get on other platforms. Yeah. So. I mean, I, okay, I can understand that. Um, but I remember seeing an article online or something um, about uh, a lot of people were making tons of money on OnlyFans and they weren't really posting like too much content or whatever, or maybe not what people would expect to be paying for. Um, so would you say that that platform has taken the opportunity of, of those major incomes away from, let's say, people like sex workers as well? Because, you know, they yeah. would be on there and trying to, you know, get money for themselves. Would, has that taken away from them? How, how is it? Yes, possibly, quite possibly. But I also think it's created a much larger market for other people to come into, you know, that kind of digital media, which they probably wouldn't have had access to before. And that's probably a good thing. So I think it's probably created new jobs as well. And I also read that really, really, really famous celebrities are on OnlyFans and they've kind of sucked up some of the work that the normal person would have done. So, but at the same time, everybody knows what OnlyFans is now. So I'm sure that the market's actually grown um, I don't think it's, it's, it's affected the other industry too much, no. Yeah, so my last question about the OnlyFans topic mm. is that, you know, they've just come out with the announcement that, you know, they're going to ban sexual stuff on, yeah. the, on the website. What does that then leave people who were posting those types of content on? Where, what's their next possible avenue? I dread to think. I hope that they don't move on to more extreme platforms like Pornhub. I would like to think not. Um, maybe they'll start up their own platforms. That that would be good because then that's kind of moving towards acting rather than you know a less <laughs> salubrious sort of profession. So I would I would like to think that the people that are on OnlyFans have learned how to use a camera, you know, how to present themselves, which is a huge skill in life, whether or not you work on or off camera, mm -hmm. isn't it? So I'd like to think they then go on to have you know careers, maybe starting up their own websites. Welcome back to episode 9, we're here at Niches and Nuances at the No Former Art Gallery and today my special guest is Laura Harris, how are you? I'm very well, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for having us, I mean this is absolutely amazing, um, we cannot fall to this as well, this is a massive achievement, a lot of people would wish to have their own art exhibition and you've made it happen, so oh. congratulations to you, um, we've talked about your work as well, it's really impressive, we really do um, appreciate you, you know you sharing this with us as well um, so what is how what inspires you with your work like yeah. do you what, what is there certain events that inspires you or do you have certain topics in mind that you like or whatever what is it good question so my work is based around women and how they think and feel mm. and also how they look so it's also sort of tied in with society as well and how society treats women um, so I'm very interested in all of those ideas and philosophies behind what it's like to be a woman. Awesome. And, I, <laughs> and I, a thing I noticed with your work is that a lot of it has deeper meanings. 
yes. very, very, very deeper meanings as yes. well. Like even with, with this example, <laughs> yes. um, you know, people look at it, okay, well, family, you know, Meghan and Harry, whatever, but finding freedom, that's a massive thing for them as well. So, I mean, talk to us about this. I mean, what, what inspired you? When did you create this even? Yeah, that's a really good question. So in the last sort of six months I created this piece, obviously they left and moved to America um, and they completely left behind their entire lives in mm. the UK. So I'm just fascinated by also the fact that Megan is American and she came here and just, you know, didn't enjoy living here or the, <laughs> didn't enjoy the culture. Um, and then there's kind of another element to the fact that everyone has kind of really struggled during the pandemic. Mm. So they're sort of finding freedom, finding ourselves again. Mm. Again, it's really again. topical. So you don't have to be Meghan or Harry to understand that kind of philosophy. I kind of feel like Meghan took a look at the weather and just went, nah. Yeah, <laughs> totally, totally. It <laughs> is like, terrible. I'm going to go back. Yeah. <laughs> because this is not for me. I mean, yeah, I mean, very inspirational pieces as well. I see you've got the signature as well. Um, how long does it take you to create this stuff? It really depends. I mean, some, I do collect a lot of ideas, yeah. you know, kind of in my mind. So it, it sounds silly because I'm creating a piece, but mm -hmm. I could be thinking about ideas and concepts that then end up in a piece many months later on. So it's a hard, I mean, actually making the work, probably not that long, maybe three days on and off for painting, um, less time for a drawing. So it depends on, on how large the piece is as well. The paintings take longer because they are larger than the drawings that I create. And how busy your schedule is as well, because you're a very busy woman, you do a lot of things, you know, you've got your webinars and Absolutely. your event rights. Talk to, talk to us about them as well. Yeah, so in terms of keeping in touch with people on, in the meantime, in between having exhibitions or doing, you know, Instagram Lives as well, I also do webinars. So it's just a really nice way of keeping in touch with anybody who's interested in my work, anybody that joins my mailing list. So I do webinars about my exhibition about my work awesome and for the people who want to find you and your work on social media or websites where can they find you yeah so laura harris london which is on instagram we're also niches and nuances and the same names for our website so niches and nuances.com and also lauraharrislondon.com fantastic you have the information off you go <laughs> <laughs> so where do you see yourself in the next six months like what is next for you where do you envision yourself to be next is to do an art fair in west london Ooh. so i'm interested in kind of you know working in different parts of london as well to capture as many people as possible because london's a large place yeah. um, and then eventually i'd like to do something maybe stateside as well north america uh, appeals to me and also links up quite nicely with the subject matter um, with megan and harry that i'm working on as well fantastic i mean uh, your work is inspired by modern day scenarios and pieces right um, another thing we've noticed with your work is that a lot of it has deeper meanings. Yes. Very, very deep meanings as well. Um, and I want you to just express more into that of like, obviously it's cool creating mm -hmm. art, but some people just like, yeah, I just got bored and just went, da -da -da, and that <laughs> happened. So, <laughs> but for you, it's, it's a deeper meaning. So yeah. can you tell us more about how like you, you, you entrap that in your art as well? Absolutely. So yes, a lot of the colours that I use and a lot of the imagery, you know, sort of like beautiful women, things like that. But there is a darker, deeper element to it, as you've mentioned, the work that I produce and absolutely picked up on the fact the text around this is tremendous anxiety with a glass of wine. And I think we've all been there at some point when we just lunge towards at the end of the day, at the end of a long, stressful day, uh, you know, a glass of wine or one or two or three. And I, yeah, I do think the mental health during the lockdown in particular was a really dark time for some people and it wasn't fun. There are lots of people who absolutely loved that time because they had too many things in the diary. Uh, but it, it was a difficult time, I think, for some people. So, yes, it, there is a darker element, like a more serious kind of discussion that I want people to have when they look at my work. Um, it's not just about a pretty woman in a bar having a glass of wine, not at all. Um, you know, alcohol is a serious drug, so yeah. What I noticed as well is that you have QR codes <laughs> for everything. And we were going back to that conversation yeah. about um, how times have changed. Oh, absolutely. Um, so what feedback have you received from, you know, the exhibition so far? 
Yeah, it's, it's a very interesting question and should you still have a physical exhibition? For me it's really important because people can actually come and you can have like a discussion mm. with people and that just doesn't happen in quite the same way online. But coming back to your question about QR codes, mm -hmm. yeah, just make things as digital, digitally accessible as possible at the exhibition with the QR codes and also so that people can connect with you through their mobile device. Yeah, it's so important to do the digital and the physical at the same time. Awesome. And I think you said something off camera as well about creating a, a mailing list as well. Yeah. Um, again, with connections and networking, how is that? Has that done something for you or like work wonders or when you've um, about to launch an event or do something has you know yeah. you reach out to your mailing list or what has how has that been yes that's a very good question because you can't just rely on social media so that's where the email marketing which is a much more traditional way of contacting yeah. people but it is the number one way to make sure that people come to your events and know about what you're doing because not everybody is going to be swiping and clicking on instagram um, but most people have an email account so i really highly recommend promoting your exhibition and your work or if you're doing anything creative make sure you have a regular email maybe once a month at the mm -hmm. very least to all of the people on your contact list Amazing. That's uh, that's great news. You're just dropping gems like there's nothing there. <laughs> um, yeah, you got people got to really do that because it's not easy. Believe me. But I mean, it it does work. It really does work. So yeah. please do get on that as well. So what is the vision for all of the art exhibitions you do? I mean, this one is ending soon on the 28th. Yeah, that's I believe. Right. Yes, yeah, so you've got yeah. a few days if you want to come down. We're in Deptford. Say the address, please, just for the people who know. Yeah, so at No Format Gallery, it's on Art Clow Road in Deptford. It's very near New Cross as well, so literally a 10-minute walk from New Cross Station. Fantastic. So what's the next thing for you? Is it another art gallery or what's, what's next for you? I'm actually doing an art fair in West London oh. in October, so I'm hoping to do a few more art fairs in the next sort of six to 12 months. And yeah, so, I'm, you know, and also keeping on promoting myself online as well. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the show. We really thank do you, appreciate Alice. you. Um, thank you for showing us your amazing work and having us, you know, we've got a little exclusive as well. We've got the whole studio to ourselves because <laughs> we've got contacts like that. <laughs> but we really do appreciate it. Um, please do get in touch, follow her and support her with her work.